All right, you guys. So today's notes are about solving quadratics by factoring. And your essential question for this set of notes, when using the zero product property, what key feature does that determine? We're going to go over a couple terms and definitions. Um, you guys, just to give you a heads up, I might not write everything down because I'm hoping that you guys are listening and still writing things down. Um, so just to give you guys a heads up, I will probably say I'm not going to write this down. Make sure you are, okay? Um, so the first term and definition is zero product property. Its definition is once a polynomial is factored, you're going to set each factors equal to zero. And it says if a times b is equal to zero, then that means that you have to set your a equal to zero, a being the, one of the factors, and or b will be equal to zero. Um, and you actually have to set both of them equal to zero. So you definitely have to do and. Um, you guys can leave and or because it's just saying that they either one of them have to equal zero. But when you're doing the factoring method, you will have to set um, both equal to zero and solve for x. Okay, so then our next term, um, zeros. This is where the parabola crosses the x-axis. Um, so some other names for this. I am not going to write this down. I want you guys to, though. Um, there are three other names called x-intercepts roots, and solutions. So there's four names actually representing the same thing, zeros, roots, x-intercepts, and solutions. Those are all representing the same thing. They're all x-intercepts. They cross the graph through the x-axis. All right, our next one we have um, is, so we don't have any terms. Um, we're just going to go over the steps on how to identify zeros from a polynomial in standard form. Make sure that you remember what standard form is. That's when you have the ax squared plus bx plus c. So remember we have, um, that that's the standard form of a polynomial. Um, and that happens to be a quadratic polynomial. So now um, we are going to go over our first step. You're going to write the polynomial in standard form, which is what I just showed you, and simplify completely. When I say simplify completely, that means you're just going to be combining like terms. Your step two, you're going to determine the general shape for the function and the number of roots by using the fundamental theorem of algebra. So I just wanted to go over what um, that actual example is. So for this example, um, and let's just say we have 2x squared and then plus 3x minus 1. Okay, so if I have this example, determining the actual shape, um, it would be so you're always going to look at the number in front of the x squared. If that number or operation is positive, it's going to be a happy face, a smiley face. It'll be facing positive. If it's a negative, then um, by multiplying that by a negative 1, then it's going to be a frowny face. It'll be an upside down parabola. So that's what that will look like. If Again, if it is the... Um, let me rewrite that 2 real fast. If it's a positive, then it would be a happy face parabola. Okay, so we can just determine that by the very first number in front of that x squared. Then the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that the highest power right there is going to tell us how many zeros we could possibly have. So if since we have a 2, that means that we should be having two um, x-intercepts, and that might be imaginary or real. So we'll get to the imaginary thing later, but um, for now we're gonna we should have two x-intercepts. Um, you're gonna be seeing that there's double roots, um, that there's single roots, stuff like that. So we'll be getting into more detail as we go. I just want you guys to have basic understanding um, for now. So make sure that um, you guys put on your notes too what the fundamental theorem of algebra is, and that's using the highest degree. Telling this tells us the number of um, factors, or sorry, not factors, but roots that we are going to be having. Okay, so that's the fundamental theorem of algebra. Then our next step, in step three, you're going to factor polynomial completely. The very first thing that you need to do, you need to identify the GCF first. Um, that's part of the factoring. That's one of the ways of factoring. Sometimes it's only that's the only step you need to do. Sometimes they don't have a GCF. Once you have figured out a GCF, or have not factored it out because there wasn't one, you're going to use an appropriate factor method to factor the rest of your polynomial. Again, I'm going to say these and not list them, okay? So, you should have GCF down, 
the difference of squares, that's if you have two terms, a binomial and a subtraction sign, the sum of cubes, meaning you have two terms again, and it's an addition sign, but it's perfect cubes this time. Difference of cubes, same thing, two terms, but it has a subtraction sign. Factor by grouping means you have four term, a four-term polynomial, and then using the AC method if you are unable to do all those. Okay, so those other ones are, um, like if you, they're kind of like little shortcuts. So again, identify GCF, difference of squares, sum of cubes, difference of cubes, factor by grouping, and AC method. Okay, so then we're going to go on to our step number four. So we're going to set polynomial factors equal to zero. This means that you are applying your zero product property. Step number five, you're solving equations for the given variable. Most likely it will be x. And then in order to check your answers, you are going to distribute. I did not... Um, write this down because I want you guys to be listening to the actual video. So um, you're checking your answers by distributing. So let's go over um, how we do the examples then. So um, your first example, you're going to determine the zeros, which are also called x-intercepts, roots and solutions of the function. So when we go ahead and do this, we see that we have the function, remember f of x just stands for y, that equals 6x squared minus 11x minus 10. So the equal sign, you guys, means that, so some before the last unit, we were just factoring. I was giving you guys just the polynomial, and you were just factoring to the point where we would go like this, and that would be your final answer, okay? Now, I'm giving you an equal sign, and that means that we are going to be going all the way where we have an equals zero, and we're going to be factoring and getting it like an x equals by itself. So because that equal sign means you're going to be using the zero product property and solving for x, okay? So then, um, let's actually go through and do this. So when we have, look for a GCF, that's our first step here. And then our second step is going to be to determine the general shape. So our general shape, we have a positive. So yay, it's going to be a happy face parabola, just because of that 6 right there, that positive 6 in front of the x squared. And then, um, just combining like terms if we can. We don't have any like terms to combine. Um, we are going to be looking for two roots because of that two, so we should have two factors. And then our next step, we need to actually factor this. So identify GCF. I don't have any. I have a three-termed um, polynomial, so I'm going to go straight into the AC method. So I'm going to do some side work over here because I'm going to do 6 times negative 10, which is a negative 60, and then I have to have a negative 11 here. So now we're trying to figure out two factors that multiply to negative 60, but then add to negative 11. So if we have 15 and 4, we need to somehow get them to be negative, and it looks like we need more negatives than we need positives. So that higher number is going to be negative, and my 4 will remain positive. So now we're going to go ahead and bring down our f of x. Um, when we are trying to find our x-intercepts, that actually means that our um, y value is always 0. So I'm actually just going to bring this to um, become 0, actually. So we're going to set y equaling 0 because on our graph, it's going through the x-axis. So see how our y value is actually 0? We don't go up or down at all um, to get these points right here. So that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, so always on our y value equals to 0, go ahead and bring down our first term. And we're going to subtract the 15x, but add the 4x, and then subtract 10. Okay, now we have our um, first two, so we have four polynomials, so now we're going to do a factor by grouping. Determine the GCF by 6x squared minus 15x. And now we're going to go ahead and take out a 3 and an x. So that means I have a 2x minus 5. Go ahead and take out GCF of this one. I have a positive 2. Again, remember to put that positive sign, you guys. Um, and then we have a 2x minus 5 again. So yay, I did my factor by grouping correctly. That is one of my factors, 2x minus 5. And then I have 3x plus 2. So, so far, the same thing that we've been doing from the last unit. You're just factoring. This time we have a 0. So now the last step, or sorry, the next step, we're going to set the polynomials um, each equal to zero. So I'm going to take this one, 
and make it 2x minus 5 equals 0. I'm going to bring this one down and also do the same thing. We're setting each of the factors, we are in factored form now, and we're setting them each equal to 0. Now I'm going to solve the equation for the given variable, that's step number 5. I'm going to add 5 to both sides, I get 2x equals 5, and I'm going to divide by 2, and now I get x equals 5 halves. Just leave it as a fraction, that's totally fine. Okay, and on this side I'm going to subtract 2, have a 3x left over, minus 2, divide by 3, and I get x equals a negative 2 thirds. Oops, let me write that a little bit higher here. X equals a negative 2 thirds. So again, the fundamental theorem of algebra told me I was going to have two factors. I had two factors, 5 halves and negative 2 thirds. Okay, so those are where our graph will actually cross the x-axis. Okay, so we are going to show you guys another example. So right now we're just practicing the zero product property. Zero product property, again, you have to be in standard form. Yay, we are. Um, now we're going to be looking to our general direction. We should have a positive graph because that 2 is a positive. Um, and for that b squared, always look at the b squared term. And then we should have two factors again. Okay. Um, so let's go through and actually identify a GCF because that's our first step for factoring always. So it looks like we have a GCF of a 2. So I'm going to have a b squared minus 3b plus 2, and that's still equal to 0. They actually are already plugged in a 0 for us instead of our f of x or a y. And then now I get to factor the remainder of this. So I have a 2, which is my GCF. Since I have a coefficient of a 1 right there, I just get to write my factors as my parentheses. They're using the b value as the variable this time. So it multiplies to 2, but then adds to a negative 3. It looks like we have to do a negative 2 and a negative 1, because a negative times a negative is positive, and then a negative, add another negative gets us our negative 3. That's still equal to 0. So now this time we have three factors. Um, however, the fundamental theorem of algebra said we were only supposed to have two. This is still the correct factor form, you guys, but when we go to set this equal to zero, see how our first factor, two, actually equals zero? Two dollars can never equal zero dollars, so that actually does not work. That's why we are down to now our two factors. B minus two equals zero, and B minus one equals zero. So now we're going to get the variables by itself, adding two, adding one, and now I get B equals two and b equals 1. So these are our x-intercepts. They will cross the graph, so I can write this as 2 comma 0. That's my one point on the graph, and then my other one is going to be 1 comma 0. So these are all both of our x-intercepts. Okay, now our last example here. Um, we're going to determine the zeros um, x-intercepts of the function again. This time we see that uh, our very first step, we need to make sure it's in standard form. It's not in standard form. You want to bring this one over here. We don't want to, I like not changing the x squared, the highest term. So what I'm going to do to get that over here, I'm going to subtract 16x from both sides, and I get 4x squared minus 16x equals 0 now. Be, for, be sure to get that 0. It's still 0 on that right side. Now I'm going to identify a GCF. I see that I have a 4 and an x. Oops, let me do that differently. So I have a 4 and I have an x and then I have an x minus 4 left over, okay? Um, and then, uh, the reason why this is not a difference of squares, you guys, is because this x is not a perfect square. If it didn't have the x, 4x squared minus 16, then you guys could have done a difference of squares. But since that x there doesn't have a squared on it, it's not a perfect square. All right, so then now we get to do our factors. This is a factor, this is a factor. We are supposed to have two according to our fundamental theorem of algebra. So we have 4x equals 0, and then x minus 4 equals 0. Go ahead and solve for x. So dividing that, we can have a number, as so we have 0 divided by a number, which gives us 0. And then we're going to add 4 here, which gives us x equals 4. So again, if I write those as points on my graph, this would be a 0, comma 0, and this would be a 4, comma 0. Okay, so those are our x-intercepts, our roots, our solutions. Um, and our zeros. So that's all of those and let's just recap real fast. So the things that you guys learned were just how to use the zero product property to identify our x-intercepts. 
um, on a graph. So in the future notes, we're going to be actually using those points to help us graph our functions. All right, I hope you guys have a good day.